First off, I want to start with a bit of an announcement. Um, not this week, but next weekend, I will not be doing a video for you because I'm going to be at Salute. And if you're not aware what that is, it's a really, really big wargaming show held every year in London at the Excel Center. So it's next Saturday. Uh, I'll be there uh, selling products, kind of representing us, you know. So if you're going to be at the show, please stop by, say hi. I'd love to meet you. You can find us because we've got this huge flag sticking up that says Caravan Sarai Publishers on it. You really can't miss it even in that huge trade hall. So uh, I may be trying to make a video kind of of my impressions of uh, this year so like I did last year but that will probably be out on sort of the normal release schedule because obviously I'm not going to be back on time to do that. Now this week uh, I'm also not going to be doing a painting tutorial. I'm going to be letting Jasper do that. So he wanted to do another armor video for you and um <clears throat> So what we got for that particular video is this guy. And I know a lot of you will be really excited for this particular tutorial. This is a Tiger, a, ger from a German tank from World War II. Very, very famous for having a very fearsome reputation. This particular kit is plastic and it's a sort of a, a cooperation between Italieri and Warlord. Uh, it has a cast on Zimmeret, as you can see, which is something that Jasper really likes and was really looking forward to having. He uh, says this kit was really easy to put together. It was really nicely made, and he really, really uh, recommends it if you are interested in this kind of thing. This particular tiger is kind of a late war one, so kind of nineteen mid-1944 type uh, model is what we're going to be talking about here. And... He's already base coat, as you can see, with just black paint, and he's going to be doing, uh, showing you how to do paint one of these, because I know it's something that a lot of people are interested in, and he's going to be doing some German camo, everybody's favorite on the tank, but uh, armor camo in this case, instead of, you know, the kind I do on clothing. Uh, camo, of course, as you know, during World War II for the Germans was very, very variable. Uh, there were some standard factory patterns, but there were just as many just sort of random kind of made up patterns that, you know, units or, you know, individual tank crews kind of came up with for their own vehicle. So I'm not quite sure what he has in mind yet, but I, can, I think it'll be cool. It will involve airbrushing for sure, because a model like this, especially if you want to do camo on it and have it look really good, you really just are going to have a hard time getting away from the airbrush. Yeah, um, on the smaller scale vehicles that he showed uh, some months ago, you can often avoid, you know, you don't have to do that with an airbrush. You can do that with just normal brushes and have it look pretty good. But the bigger you get scale-wise with armor, the more kind of necessary an airbrush tends to become to get a nice, smooth, even professional look. So he's going to be giving you some tips for that, also showing you how to do weathering, you know, applying mud, all the things that you would expect on sort of this large scale type model. And I know, it. so anyway, I think that's all and I'm just going to let him get started because I know there are a lot of people who are really looking forward to seeing this one. Uh, Jasper's going to start out here by base coating the tank in sort of the yellowish color that is, you know, used on most sort of German tanks with a camo pattern applied to them. And this is a Vallejo Air Surface Primer in a German dark yellow, and he's gonna put it on the tracks and the turret and also on the body of the tank. Now Jasper's going to highlight the tank by spraying directionally sort of from the top downwards. Uh, the paint he's using here is from the uh, MiG 1944 sort of color set for painting armor, I guess, and the color he's using here is Dunkelgeb, and it, it comes actually in two shades. There's a lighter color and a darker ver a color of it, so he plays the darker one on first and then the lighter one much uh, lighter and only on the top. Once the base is done, Jasper's going to start applying the pattern. This is probably the most time-consuming part on one of these German tanks because, <clears throat> depending on the pattern you're doing, of course, but uh, many of them are rather um, detailed and can be kind of complicated. And he's opted here for a pattern that involves a lot of sort of thin, streaky lines uh, that cover the body of the tank and the turret and all of those areas. 
and so you need to be very you know methodical when you're doing this in painting the lines he's what he's done here is taken some Vallejo air camouflage green and put it in his airbrush and you're gonna when you're painting these real thin lines you're gonna make sure you want to use a lot of flow improver even though these paints are designed of course for airbrush already so they're extra thin and they flow better than normal paints you still want to put extra flow improver in here when you want to especially when you're going to try and be doing these really fine detailed lines because otherwise your, your airbrush is going to be clogging up quite a bit. That's something else I should point out here. There's different nibs you can get for your airbrush. You can have a sort of fatter nibs ranging down to quite thin fine nibs and if you're going to be doing work like this particularly you want to be using the kind of the finest nib you can get on your airbrush but it goes along with that when you're using such fine nibs that the chances of them clogging up or you know getting spray problems are much greater than with the fatter um, airbrush head so it's it's just even more critical that you put you thin your paint down a lot and really use a lot of uh, flow improver and you're going to want to make sure you stop frequently you can see Jasper doing that to really to clear it out because it, the, the paint will, will kind of build up in there and it won't work well so you just kind of have to blast it out so that you can you know keep creating good uh, smooth even uh, lines on the tank if you find also that your lines you're getting too much sort of your lines are getting too fuzzy and there's too much sort of spray out around the edge of the lines uh, it probably means that your pressure is too low there's various causes uh, that's a whole nother subject diagnosing airbrush issues but if you're getting a lot of kind of dots and the line and sort of green paint around your lines then you probably need to increase your pressure uh, a good it's important of course with airbrushes to have a good compressor for that reason Uh, next, uh, Jasper is going to apply a brown into his powder, and he used here Vallejo Air uh, Brown, and also a little bit of the MIG um, 1944 Brown, which is uh, similar, but it's it's a little orangey and a lot and brighter. And he didn't quite like the effect of it, so he ended up mixing a little bit. And I think in the end, he just settled for just the plain <coughs> Vallejo Air Brown. You can see this is quite an orange shade, uh, and it may not be to your taste and that's okay if it's not uh, you can opt for a brown or brown you know this the, these uh, the color kind of colors being used on these varied widely uh, it wasn't really standardized well it was sometimes if I mean depending on the tank you're painting the period you're painting the Germans did have camouflage sometimes that was applied at the factory really towards the end of the war mostly but the vast majority of vehicles and tanks, especially earlier ones and still even a lot in the late war, the, the camo was really just painted by the crew themselves or by the unit and so uh, that's why you see so much variation in German camo. That's why it's, it's hard to do a pattern that's really wrong on one of these because you know it, when so many different people were doing them they all had their own take on it and some of them were very very creative in what they came up with. Uh, so a lot of times you can just kind of invent something that looks nice, it's kind of attractive to you, unless, of course, I said you're really trying to emulate a factory camouflage pattern on one of the uh, late model tanks. But, you know, so Jasper's just like with the green, taking this particular brown color and creating some thin lines here that he's kind of balancing out with his green lines and again just being careful to make sure there's plenty of flow improver in the paint and clearing the airbrush regularly and you know you're just trying to get an attractive balance of you know brown to green a ratio that looks nice on the tank next Jasper is going to apply the insignia and numbering to the tank now uh, under normal circumstances when you're doing a vehicle like this you can just kind of apply a decal and be done with it it's pretty straight for and there are a lot of really nice decals out there for these tanks as a matter of fact one came with the set however this tank model presents a unique problem in that it has zimmerit on it and when you've got zimmerit like this that really rough uh, bumpy surface you're going to find it's very very difficult to apply decals they just won't stick and it won't look good so 
that means that if you want to get insignia on your tank, you're kind of going to be forced to hand paint them, which can be kind of a bear because, of course, these tanks are known for having very even sort of crisp applied decals and insignia, or not decals, but insignia, the, the, the numbers were often applied with a stencil, so they really look clean and sharp. Uh, Jasper just painted the uh, cross onto the side of the tank using just all sort of a off-white and black. And then the numbers, he, uh, he spent a lot more uh, time on. I mean, the, the cross is pretty straightforward. You just paint your black cross and then you very carefully sort of outline it in white. Uh, with the numbers, it's, it's, I think, again, it's, it's really just patience and having a steady hand and very carefully, you know, studying uh, how the, those numbers looked on a tank. He, he just, um, you know, went ahead and painted the numbers very carefully with a, sort of a bright red, Vallejo bright red, or you could use a Citadel red color like Mephiston red, and then, you know, again, outline them very carefully in white. You're going to want to use a fine brush for this, uh, like a number zero probably, or if not a double zero, and you're going to make sure your paint's real thin, especially because you're working over that sort of lumpy zimmerit and if the paint doesn't flow really well it's not you're not gonna be able to put nice smooth lines down on that surface uh, but so I would say just you know be very work very gradually work in sort of small chunks really take your time uh, just really just uh, have some patience and you know it, it, you can also just practice beforehand if you want you can try uh, doing it on a flat surface first if you want just to sort of get a feel for what you're doing and you know just you know don't give up you know just <laughs> it's I don't know what to tell you about this except it's just one of those things that you're gonna have to kind of sort of be brave uh, commit to do your best and it you know and don't you know don't get too upset if it's not perfect in the end With a really annoying chore of painting the insignia done, uh, Jasper's going to go ahead and apply a really nice heavy wash of Agrax Earthshade uh, all over the road wheels and uh, sprockets and that kind of thing inside the tracks. And you're going to be putting a lot on here, so it's good to do this now because it's going to really need to sit and dry for quite a long time. And this is just really good you, because you want to build up that really extra mud and grime and shade uh, in this part of the tank. As part of muddying and dirtying up the whole underside of the tank, so this goes along with washing the tracks, Jasper has this mixture which he actually makes up and kind of saves in a plastic box. And it consists of brown paint, sort of sand, grit, and a, quite a bit of white glue. And that just sort of forms a paste, and you can just kind of keep it on hand. Anyway, it's good for basing things and also for dirtying things up. So he's just a, a, kind of a brushing this all over, sort of the under carriage where between sort of the tracks and the hall where it would be really muddy and dirty and a lot of stuff would get caked on. You're hardly going to see this in the finished model but it's a nice little detail. With that done, Jasper is going to continue washing the tank. He's using Agrax Earthshade again, but this time he's thinned it down a lot. So there's really a lot of water in here to make it quite subtle. And he's going to be sort of brushing it all over the, um, the hull of the tank and the turret. Um, he's applying it uh, um, not lightly, he's applying it, but very evenly. But it's so thin with water that you can slop it on it. It's still not going to really... Uh, you know, build up too quickly. So he's just trying to get a nice, heavy, even layer of this very watered down wash on all of those areas. And again, it's very important here that you don't get any sort of pooling or build up, especially on uh, sort of the smoother, flatter areas. So if that happens, you're going to want to uh, correct that problem. So Jasper has sort of a Q-tip here on hand, so he'll go back in then, and if he sees that there's any sort of dark pools or anything, or any sort of areas building up that he doesn't like, he can, you know, take that Q-tip and run over them. He just wets that Q-tip, or not even wet, just dry, and sort of, and just sort of rub it off of areas where he, where he got it, where he doesn't like how it looks, and, you know, how it, it sort of is came out and as, as long as you do that while the wash is at least still semi-wet you shouldn't have any problem getting it off 
The next stage in weathering the tank is to apply a, a dry brush layer. Jasper here is using Vallejo Dark Sand and he's applying it very, very lightly because of course you've got the green and the brown and the camo there and you don't want to really turn them yellow. This is, this, but this will give the tank a sort of overall sort of nice dusty sort of weathered looking effect but you really don't want to leave very much paint on your brush. You can see you know, if Jasper's not sure about the darkness of consistency he sort of does a little test on the underside of the tank where it's obstructing you're not going to be able to see it very well and that kind of lets him kind of measure his paint density and the color and test the color and everything but you can see he's especially emphasizing all sort of like edges in of the model and any sort of details where they stick up and on the Zimmerit he's dry brushing too but he's doing so, sort of emphasizing the sort of ridge the Zimmerit but pretty lightly you just but this you want to really when in doubt with this kind of dry brush and something like this don't overcommit. just go very lightly lighter than you think you need to and if it, it's not and then if it's too subtle you can always go back over it later or increase the pressure a little bit but you don't want to accidentally push too hard and get too much paint on there because once it's there it's there and it's much harder to correct so you know better to err on the side of caution with this but just uh, you know this 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 first dry brush just wants to go pretty much all over the tank and emphasizing the parts that are sticking out the most. Once that dry brush is finished, it's back to applying wash, and now we've moved on to a pin wash. So Jasper's got a really fine, delicate brush, a zero or a one here, and he's using now pure Agrex Earthshade again, so it's not the thinned down version. He sort of applied uh, very generously. It's now being used in a concentrated form, but then being applied only to very key areas. So you can see he's putting it down uh, in between all the cracks and the paneling and in the armor. You can see how he's edging around the towing cables and just anywhere that there's different elements or breaks in the model or any sort of recesses or cracks or any sort of divisions, you know, he's going to be put applying this, this sort of dark brown wash there very carefully and this it's very subtle but it will add a sort of a very pleasing sort of uh, extra contrast level to the model that, that in the overall scheme of things will really enhance uh, the appearance and you can of course choose to go back in and apply multiple layers in some places if you want so if there's some things that you really want extra emphasis in or you think there would really be a really deep shadow it would be extra dark or you know extra heavy you can you know let it dry uh, and then just go back and do it a couple times just to build that up because it, it, it's not it may not you know if it's not subtle enough it just depends on what you like basically Now Jasper is going to be painting some of the small sort of wooden things that are attached to the hall. So uh, like all the tool handles, there's that, that wooden block there. He base coated them using German camouflage black brown and then he's going to highlight them and you, with a sort of a light wood color. And you could use German camouflage pale brown for this or khaki too. And then you just want to mix a little gray and I use sky gray often for this purpose. And that makes, that gray in there will make the wood have a more of a worn weathered look which is more suitable for bits that have been outside and are getting exposed to the elements like these would be. And then Jasper's going to be painting all of sort of the metal parts and things that are attached to the tank body. So that's going to be like the towing cables, uh, the you know the axe head, the shovel head, that sea towing clamp, the gun barrels down inside the hatches where you know you can't see, so it's going to be dark. Any sort of areas like that, any other little bits, separate bits like that, they all just need to be base coated here with a good shade, a shade that's really good for like metal. So he's using a Vallejo German gray here and this is just, uh, this is just really a question of just simple, just very, it's very simple, but just being very careful and just applying the paint neatly here and evenly and you know, not getting it onto the hall or your camouflage pattern. Once those metal areas are base coated, you can also go over them with a wash, which is especially helpful like with the towing cables and stuff, which have all those sort of little 
um, knots and sort of sculpting recesses in, down inside them. So a wash, in this case we're using Nuln oil, is going to be helpful in, hel in helping to build up contrast there and really make those stand out. Because they're such small areas though, you're going to want to do apply your wash really carefully. So you're going to want to, you know, here, use a very small uh, brush and keep a light touch. Next, Jasper is going to be base coating the tracks on the tank. That's pretty quick and easy. You just need to get the paint all over them and not get it onto your road wheels too badly. Uh, he's using Vallejo uh, red leather here because he wants to sort of emphasize the sort of dark, rusty nature of these tracks. I mean, obviously, they're not going to be rusty on their sort of top surfaces, but down in all the cracks and recesses, they are going to get sort of a dark brownish rusty look after a certain amount of wear. Also don't forget that on the turret of the tank, at least on this model, there are some sort of spare tra uh, track sections which have been attached there so you want to make sure you also give them this brown uh, base coat. Then in order to build up even more contrast and weathering and wear and you know just make the track stand out even more, uh, Jasper's going to add a really nice, dense, heavy wash of Nuln oil on all the tracks and, you know, really build it up down in all of those cracks. You can see he's also applying a little bit sort of inside the gun barrel at the end, at the muzzle, because that, that gets dark in there and also because of when you fire the gun, there's going to be some uh, powder buildup. It's going to, on the outside, it's going to get dark over time, so you can sort of use a wash to subtly kind of help add that effect to things. Jasper's now going to apply a very light dry brush to all the sort of metal areas, the tools like those tow cables again and the metal parts. Uh, and he's using here Vallejo Air Gun Metal and he's going to apply it very lightly. He's using a really small flat headed brush. F flat headed brushes like these are sort of the best for dry brushing. They're the easiest with nice stiff bristles. And you can see he's just going to go very lightly over those areas just to build up sort of a slight metallic sheen, especially around the edges. And you have to be real careful here, obviously, because you don't want to get any of this metallic paint onto your hull if you can possibly avoid it. Now uh, Jasper's going to be base coating the exhaust uh, tailpipes and these would have been really rusty on these tanks. They got that way really quickly. He's using Saddle Brown here as the base so that we can really start building up that rusty color straight away. And then he applies a nice thick darkening wash to them uh, again of Agrax Earthshade. Uh, with the wash drying, Jasper's going to go back in and just dirty up and muddy up the undercarriage a little bit more. He's using here um, Vallejo Sandy Paste, which is kind of this thick, yeah, pasty, sandy compound, as the name would suggest, but you can add your own color to it to get the effect that you want. So he's mixed some German camouflage black-brown it to get a darker, muddier color. And you can see he's p applying it along sort of the arm, the bottom of the armor paneling sort of directly underneath. This is a little bit uh, finer and smoother you know, than the sort of that gunk that he, or homemade gunk that he used earlier. And this just is a little bit more refined for getting into all those areas and bits around the bottom of the tank that you would expect to be kind of dirty. And you can see he's also even using a toothpick to help get it down in tracks and some small holes and areas that he can't reach with a brush. With the wash dry, Jasper can continue uh, weathering the uh, exhaust pipes, the tailpipes. Uh, he's using orange brown here and he's just going to be dabbing on little spots. You can see there's also going to be some rust sort of on those protective sort of guards that surround the tailpipe. So you're going to want to make it look like there's some chipping and rusting around the bottoms and sort of tops of those and on the inside. So you can see he's sort of dabbing it on little spots and chunks around those sort of edge parts. And he's going to be doing the same thing on the tailpipes themselves where they show sort of uh, dabbing it around the edges and really kind of do sort of a stippling technique here so that you can get that sort of peeled kind of flaky rusty look and I would recommend that you use several colors for this so you maybe use the orange the red orange or whatever and the, but you may want to then uh, make a slightly lighter shade or even a slightly darker shade using say the saddle brown or the red leather or whatever you want so that you get some variation 
in the spots because you know if you see a sort of a rusty surface you'll see that there's sort of like flaky sort of patchy things going on that have just slightly different tones in them so this it's not too hard to simulate this effect at all with paint you just need to use several different colors and just dot them on Now by this time the really heavy wash that was applied to the tracks earlier has dried so it's a time to uh, kind of have some fun and uh, apply a little bit of dry brushing and uh, highlighting. So uh, Jasper first is going to paint around the uh, sort of the uh, the wheels, the road wheels. Uh, on um, Tigers, unlike on a lot of other tanks which had rubber uh, wheels uh, or tires, the Tiger just had metal, straight metal wheels. So. Uh, these areas uh, were sort of first base coat with German gray and now Jasper is lightly sort of highlighting them with a little bit of gun metal because those edges would have gotten shiny and they wouldn't have rusted anyway so you would have had definitely a shiny metal sort of surface on those uh, edges of the wheels. Uh, then after that he's going to apply a dry brush to the tracks and he's going to be using um, first Vallejo Air gunmetal for that and it, just like when he was doing the tools he's going to apply that really lightly wipe off most of the paint and then just brush it over the highest surface so that'll make sure that sort of the places where the treads would be uh, contacting the ground or the pavement or whatever surface they were moving along that those areas are then going to appear worn um, like that they're, that they're worn off and there'll be sort of this shiny exposed metal effect on those areas just sort of a slight uh, gleam basically and then after that if you want even more emphasis and, and Jasper certainly did he went back in with some Vallejo Air Steel and he dry brushed again but then only really on those the, the sort of the most extreme areas of the tracks where he really wanted to build up this you know real bright shiny metal steel effect because the tracks are really, you know, touching the ground a lot and really experiencing a lot of wear. And now, of course, no uh, armor model would be complete without some chipping and dings and stuff like that. If you watched any of our previous videos on painting armor, you know that we think that you this really should be kind of a less is more philosophy with applying dings and chips because if you see one of these things in full scale, uh, even after a hard wear and heavy campaigning, the amount of dings and chips and sort of areas where paint are getting knocked off is really uh, quite minimal, surprisingly so. Uh, so, uh, you know, you, it's, you see, tend to see all these mini models where there's just chipping and dings and just everything is just knocked to heck, but that's actually really, it's really not that realistic. It really, even on heavily used vehicles, it just didn't happen like that. Uh, so, and I personally don't really like that look on models, so I think less is more is the way to go, and so I've just been toning it down recently, and so has Jasper in terms of the amount of dings. So, what he's doing here is he's using German camouflage background, and he's just going very subtly, a few areas, very, he's picking very judiciously where there would be some wear, and then choosing those areas carefully and then applying less than you might want to. So things like around the hatches, uh, doors where people would be climbing in and around the tank, uh, some edges, around a bit around the bottom of the metal skirting where you might be getting a few dings or scratches or just any place where the tank might be banging into or rubbing against things. But once again, just not as much as you might think, just, you know, you know just do less just stop yourself and don't get too carried away with this um, but this dark brown color that should be sort of your main color and then once you've applied a fair number of chips with that uh, you can go back in and make some of the chips really extreme using uh, Vallejo Air Steel in this case so really the whole you know all the paint has been worn off the brown kind of simulates just where it's been scratched to the sort of the primer coat and this shows where uh, it's been knocked down to the metal. So if you you didn't you shouldn't have applied very many uh, chips using the dark brown. You should apply even less using this shiny metal color. You just want some tiny spots, tiny indicators here and there, uh, in the you know in the those areas where you already applied the brown. Just kind of add extra metal flakes here and there, around and in those patches, and 
you know, just be very, very sparing here. I really just can't emphasize it enough because your model will look better if you don't overdo this step. But at the same time, it is important to do it some because it's these kind of little details that make the tank, you know, make it look realistic, make it, you know, add personality to it and also make it appear believable. Okay, and here is our finished sort of mid-1944 uh, Tiger model with a sort of a homebrew camouflage pattern applied to it. Um, I really like how this came out, and I think Jasper is also really happy with the results. It seems like the more armor you do, the more practice you get, and the better it looks. And I think this is a really nice model, and I hope you... Uh, got some techniques here that you can use even if you don't have an airbrush and you know that that whole thing is not possible for you maybe you s learn something here about weathering or uh, you know painting distressing or something that you can can apply to tanks you know maybe that don't have camo that are just straight uh, so once again if you like this video please like it uh, share it leave us comments I want to hear what you think so does Jasper uh, so yeah just leave leave that information uh, subscribe of course to the channel if you haven't got to do so already I really appreciate it and uh, that's all and I will see you next time